are we doing today? Well, I found another place to come out and shoot, and the reason I'm out here today is because of all these white clouds that are floating around in the sky. I was sitting at home and looked outside, and these big puffy clouds are dancing across the sky, so I thought, I gotta get my camera out there and get some pictures taken. <clears throat> and I came out to a new spot, and I can see a saguaro cactus up on the hill over there. And I want to talk to you a little bit about the best laid plans of mice and men. I came out here and I saw that cactus on the, on the skyline over there. Let me just roll a little video here so you can see what I'm looking at. All right. This, uh, I'm not going to be able to do that because I've got my 300 millimeter lens on there. What I'm doing is, is it's way up on the hill out there. And I, I've zoomed in with my 300 millimeter lens, but I like the, I like the composition of the the cactus against the sky, the little bit of blue that's in there, from the and the the grayness and the whiteness of the clouds. It's it's really making a decent shot, and the and the sun is coming through and it's just beaming light onto that thing, and it really looks nice. But there is a bush in the way. If you look at that, there is a uh, every swirl cactus seems like they have something bush growing up around it. So I don't like that. It looks too cluttered and, and kind of defeats the purpose of this shot. So one of my, one of my favorite things to say is, is that, um, the way you can improve your, your photography is to move your feet. We're just going to move this whole setup until we can, we can isolate that cactus. We can isolate that cactus against the sky and hopefully the clouds will cooperate and we may have just wait because there's a little bit of breeze and the clouds are rolling past. So I want a little bit of blue in the shot and I want a little bit of the cloud in the shot. So we're just going to move until we find what we're looking for. Let's go do that. I don't, <clears throat> I don't know if you can see that with this camera, but there is that bush that was in front of my saguaro cactus is about 10 yards in front of it. So all we've got to do is move a little bit. There goes a jackrabbit. Ah, I need to get a picture of him. Anyways, all we have to do is move a little bit and we can move that bush out of our way. So I've come down here about, I don't know, we're couple hundred feet away from where we were before. Sorry about the wind. And now, let's get you set up here. Now, that cactus is now free of obstructions. Let's just roll this one here and you can see what I'm looking at. Oh crap. That was the wrong thing. All right. All right. Now that that cactus is free of obstructions and it's kind of silhouetted against the sky right there. Right now it's behind a, if you look right here, if you look in here, it's, it's behind a I'm sorry, it's in front of a cloud, but I can see blue sky coming. And as soon as that blue sky comes into my frame, I'm going to take a couple shots. I mean, it's, it, it's a cool shot right now with the cloud behind it. It would actually look good black and white, but there's a really dark patch behind the, behind the, uh, the cactus right now. That's kind of adding a little bit of drama to the shot. So I'm just going to wait here until we get a little bit of blue sky in here. The let oh, I just saw something else. We're going to take that shot in a minute. I just saw another one, but um, I'm going to wait for the blue sky to come across, and we'll get a uh, get a cool shot with that. All right. Okay. While we're waiting for that, that sky is. It's a couple minutes away. I can see that it's gonna that blue sky is gonna come into my shot pretty soon. 
But let me talk to you about uh, shooting with a long lens. Um, I've got this lens. This type of lens extends out as you as you zoom out to the 300 millimeters. It gets longer. And on a breezy day like today, that can cause vibration. Um, with slower shutter speeds, uh, it, it'll cause blurriness in your shot. Movement will call, cause blurriness in your shot. But it is so sunny right here, we're shooting at like 800th of a second, something like that, f11 at eight, 1 800th of a second. That's really fast. So it's going to stop all that motion. But I'm still using my timer to keep my, my hand off the, off the, uh, the button, the, the shutter. And um, I'm a little distracted here because this is going to happen here in a second or two. Um, to, to keep your hand off the shutter to, to eliminate any, any chance of vibration. You can also use a remote trigger, which is, I have one in my bag, but I just haven't dug it out of there. You plug it into your camera, hit the button, no hand, you're hands free on your camera. Any little, any little movement will cause, will cause a blurry shot, especially at a long distance. All right, the light is ever changing here. So I'm, I'm, I've, I've dialed it down to f8, which is still very sharp for this lens. And the reason for that is, is um, the, the wider the aperture, the more light comes in, and the faster your shutter speed has to be to balance out the exposure. And I want a pretty fast shutter speed because this lens is hanging out there. Now the wind stopped. Oh, the weather. Thanks, universe. You're really messing with me here. Um, but with a, with a fast shutter speed, you eliminate the, the chance of a blurry shot. So I'm at f8, 640th of a second. Right now, it's still, it's still surrounded with, with clouds, but it's still a cool shot. There's some definition in the clouds. It's right on the seam of where one cloud and another cloud are coming together, and there is there's some contrast there. If it was just one big white cloud, it would be just a white mess behind it. So I'm just going to wait a little bit. And we're going to look around for something else to shoot while we're waiting. talked about with the best laid plans of mice and men well that cloud up there has decided to stall and it's right it, it's huge big huge cloud and it's right behind the cactus that I wanted to shoot and it's just making a big blown out white background and I don't want that but I looked over here and there's another swirl standing right there all by itself and there's clouds behind it Patches of blue sky, the desert. I'm gonna shoot this vertically because it's such a tall, such a tall thing, and it'll look good on Instagram. You take up as much real estate as you can on Instagram, so vertical shots work really well. So I'm gonna take this shot. I've positioned, I positioned the the cactus on the right third of the shot. Always, always, not always, but I like to use the rule of thirds. In a, in a horizontal position or a horizontal shot or a vertical shot. And I've done it with this one. I'm just waiting for the, I'm waiting for the light to, to look really nice. And that looks pretty good right there. And there we go. You have two options with this. You can use it as a color shot or black and white. It will look great either way because of the drama with the clouds in the back, in the, in the background. Plus the sun has broken through the clouds over here and has given us light shining on there and really makes that really makes that saguaro stand out. So the takeaway from this is to move your feet and use that range of your lens to compose your shot to get the effect and the subject framed the way you want it. Don't be afraid to shoot vertically. Don't be afraid to shoot horizontally. 
shoot it on an angle. 45, those sometimes look cool too. That cloud is going the other direction. It was going this way. It stalled, merged with another huge cloud, and now it's moving back the other way, and that's going to take forever. I may what what I may do is I may just I may just take this long lens off, put a wider one on, and we'll see if we can get some more of that drama in the sky. I gotta I gotta find something to shoot though. All right, the light is ever changing out here, and I've switched to my to my wider lens. This is a Sigma 17 to 55. It's still a zoom, but it gives you a smaller range of zoom, but at 17 millimeters, it's pretty wide. And I shoot with this lens a lot because it's super sharp and I, I really like it. But what I've, what I've found here is a, the last shot of the day is gonna be at this Akatillo bush right here. Akatillo are, are a very unique plant and we have all this drama in the sky. So I'm gonna shoot this in black and white. Whenever you have, um, a lot of cloud cover or, you know, big puffy clouds, storm clouds, things like that. Just, just drama in the sky. I always at least shoot a couple black and white shots because it really, really makes a dramatic and moody shot. Now today the light is ever changing. The sun goes behind the cloud, gets kind of dark, kind of flat light. And then the sun comes out and boom, it lights up the desert like, like somebody just turned on a spotlight. So I'm just waiting for the clouds to, to pass in front of the sun. Let the sun come out, light this up. Those clouds will, will get real bright and, and there'll be, the shadows will be nice on it. So I'm shooting this at, at F8, just focusing on the, on the cactus right there. And it's, it's telling a kind of a unique story. It's a, uh, Black, a lot, of, a lot of photographers don't like black and white. I don't know why. It just, it just adds a little bit of, uh, a little bit of variety to your portfolio if you can shoot in black and white. And it really transforms the mood of the image when you shoot in black and white. So depending on what type of story you want to tell, color, black and white, desaturated, a little bit of color, there's all kinds of things you can do. Practice with that stuff, get out and shoot. And today, the rest of the day, I think I'm just gonna wait for the light and it gives me some more shots, I'm gonna take them. Otherwise, I'm just gonna enjoy the day. So, I hope this stuff helps. Get out and take some pictures and I'll see you out there. See you guys.